Good evening. I can't really hear you, but uh, I trust that you can hear me. Uh, if you can't, honk your horn. All right, we're good. Want to uh, just take this opportunity to welcome you this evening. It's a great opportunity that we have to get together like this after, what, I don't know, I've lost track of time, three, going on four months, and. Uh, just so glad that we're able to get together like this. Just a couple of reminders um, before we begin. Uh, we just ask that everyone does stay in their vehicles and as well uh, to remind you that there is no access to the building. Uh, following the service, uh, there'll be guides to guide you out this way. Um, Captain Graciel and I will be there to say a quick hello. And if you uh, have brought your offering or your tithe uh, this evening, you can also uh, we will have a bucket that we will stretch out to you and we'll do a socially distance offering. Sound good? Uh, Captain Graciela is going to come and she is going to share the call to worship. Good evening. We thank God for the opportunity to gather once again as brothers and sisters. What, what a privilege this is that we can all come together today for worship after such a long that we could come together for worship after such a long time. So we thank God for this great opportunity. I invite you to open your Bible, Psalm 121. Psalm 121, and it was read this morning at the online service by some of our young ones, and we thank God for them. Turn with me, Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Amen. And we trust that the Lord continues to watch over us. Our opening song is To God Be the Glory.
I see lips moving and I see people clapping. It's beautiful. We can't hear each other, but the Lord hears us and he knows that this worship is for him. Great. Let's sing verses two and three. Father in heaven, we give you the glory. You have done great things, and we're here to worship you and to thank you and to praise you because you deserve our praise. You deserve our honor. God, you deserve glory, and that's why we are here today. The circumstances are different, but the God is the same. The reason we worship is the same because you are our God, and we thank you. Thank you for the gift of gathering. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us so that we may be saved and see you face to face one day. God, as we worship you today, we ask that you would accept our worship as a beautiful fragrance to you. We do this out of pure heart, pure gratitude, and we're here to worship you, so we ask that you would accept it. Bless everyone who is here. May we be blessed because we've gathered. For those who are not able to be with us, wherever they are, may you, they feel your presence and may they be blessed as well. Continue to be in our midst, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. you to turn in your Bible for a scripture reading to the book of Matthew, chapter 13. I'm going to read from verse 1 until 9. 
then 18 until 23. The parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Verse 18 to 23 says, Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only for a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is a man who hears the word. But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choked it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. May God speak to us in a special way through his word.
want to uh, share with you a verse of scripture from Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1, and over the next number of weeks, uh, we're in this sermon series that we're starting today called Rooted. And uh, you'll see why in just a moment, why this is our theme verse for the next four weeks. Maybe it's some verses that you'd like to, over the next few weeks, work on and maybe even put to memory. Uh, Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man or woman who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. And this is really the key verse here. Verses 3 and verse 3. He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked. The wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Today we are looking at the parable of the sower, and uh, it might be very familiar words for you this morning. Uh, But the idea, kind of the point that we want to get to today is that the seed of the gospel, we'll be talking about seeds, we'll be talking about planting, and uh, today, as I said, we're talking about being rooted, and today is, well, before anything can be rooted, it must be planted. Uh, But the idea is that the seed of the gospel is available to all, Uh, all that are listening Uh, whether here in the parking lot or whether uh, online when you're listening to this service, the seed of the gospel is available to all, and it is sown generously, uh, no matter what the heart condition of the individual. And we'll see that as we look at the four examples of the different kinds of soil where the seed falls and the results of what happens. Its ability to take root and grow when planted is dependent on the condition of the soil or should I say, on the condition of the soil of one's heart. Our prayer before we begin says, God, we believe that the harvest is ready. Lord, even now we pray that you would prepare our hearts to receive the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that it may take root in our lives and that it would produce a crop that is far beyond what we can imagine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, in my pocket, I could do like a children's time. I could ask, what do you think is in my pocket? In my pocket uh, tonight are some seeds. Uh, And these seeds are mammoth sunflower seeds. If you remember our garden last year, just around the corner from us, uh, you'll remember that there were some pretty impressive sunflowers in that garden. And uh, as you're leaving today, you can take a drive by the garden because things are, have been planted and things are already sprouting and things are already starting to grow. But these seeds, you know, they, I'm just going to pull one out and I don't imagine you can really see it. If you can see it, you've got better eyes than I do. Uh, but these seeds are rather tiny, aren't they? Uh, but we know that once they are planted in good and fertile soil, Uh, that they will grow and they will grow and they will grow. I think these sunflowers must have been at least six feet tall. And uh, when, at the end of the season, of course, we know that there's also tons of little sunflower seeds in each of those flowers that they reproduce. Um, But we have the seed. They're very small. And uh, what the seed is really dependent on, if you know anything about growing anything, uh, the seed is really... Like this seed has been in this package for a number of months now, and it's not doing anything. This is the same seed that's been in here. Actually, I think these are left over from last year. But the seed, we know that if the seed is going to grow, that we need the right conditions for it to be able to grow. So we need things like uh, the sun. It's a beautiful sunny day. It must be almost 30 degrees out. I hope you're not sweating too much in your cars. Uh, But we need the sun. Uh, We need the rain. And of course, we know that we need the soil. Without these things, right? Without these things, this seed will not grow. In our parable today that Captain Graciela read for us, um, 
we read about this parable of the sower, and I just want to look at what it says. In the parable of the sower, Jesus says, here's what it is. A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. We read the results, that the birds came and ate it up. Some, we read, fell on rocky places. Perhaps if I throw that seed on the parking lot, we'll see if it grows by next week. I doubt it. But some of the seed fell on rocky places. There was little soil. It sprang up. But the soil was shallow or not there at all. And when the sun came up, we read that the plants were scorched and they died. They withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns. It would be like throwing a handful of seeds in the weeds. And we read that the weeds came and they grew and they outgrew the plant and they choked it out. So it did not grow. And then finally, we read about the other seed that fell on good and fertile soil. And what happened there? What happened there is the seed fell into good soil. And I imagine the sun and the rain and all the right conditions just lined up. So that seed produced an amazing crop. And we read was 30 or 60. Or this is absolutely an amazing yield to think in Jesus' time. That this crop would yield up to 100 times. Well, this is what Jesus says, that when the soil conditions are right, the word will grow. When the soil condition of our hearts, when our hearts are right, and when our hearts are in tune with what Jesus has to say, the word, the seed that is sown, that is the word that is implanted in us, will grow. And of course, we know when things grow, they are fruitful and they produce fruit. A few verses later in Matthew, Jesus explains the meaning of this parable. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in his heart. This is the seed that's sown along the path. The one who received the seed that, that sowed the seed that fell on the rocky places is the one who hears and at once receives it with joy. But since it has no root, he only lasts a short time. When trouble or when persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the one who hears the word. But then things like the worries of life come. Uh, the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But here's the but. Here's the big but in all this. But the one who received the seed that fell on the good soil is the one who hears the word. They understand it. And here it says a crop is produced, yielding 100, 60, or 30 times what is sown. We see the different examples of when, uh, when seed is sown. And when it's not sown in the right places, or perhaps when our hearts are hard, or perhaps when our hearts aren't open to the gospel, uh, we read of the negative consequences. But when the condition of our hearts is right, amazing growth takes place. A heart that is fertile is one that accepts the gospel seed and does the hard work of nurturing it to grow, right? The seed just doesn't grow on itself. It takes all the right elements. And if we're thinking about how the word of God can be grown in our own lives and how it can be uh, strong and be fruitful, we need the right conditions, don't we? We need a heart. But how do we prepare our heart? Well, I would suggest that it's through reading God's word, through prayer, through Bible study, uh, through fellowship with other Christians. That might look different these days. It might be a, a Zoom meeting. But these are ways that we can make sure that the soil of our hearts is, is fertile and ready for God's word. The heart is made ready by the prompting of God's Holy Spirit and the participation of the individual. The heart does not just experience growth for themselves, but actually impacts those around. Healthy soil is where seeds have the most opportunity to grow into life-giving plants, trees, or whatever it might be. For instance, a single healthy apple tree can bear enough fruit to feed dozens of people. It gives shade to those who pass by on hot days. Its flowers nourish hundreds of pollinators every spring. And its seeds spread. And it multiplies 
into an immeasurable amount of other apple trees through the course of its lifetime. As we think about our, uh, of the soil and the soil of our hearts this morning, the question uh, I'd like us to think about is this. What kind of soil would describe your heart today? Is it hard and rocky? Is it obstinate? Or is it one that is prepared and willing to receive the word of God? Because after a seed is planted, well, we have this natural expectation that it's going to grow. Uh, when Lorna and Brian and their team of volunteers planted the seed in our garden, uh, they planted them, I guess, with a little bit of faith in hope that when they planted it, that it was going to grow. And the evidence is there that things are growing. We expect the seed to grow, and we want the seed to grow because we want the crop. We want to have a harvest. We want to witness and we want to see a harvest of souls for God. So think about it this evening. Think about the soil of your heart. That's my challenge to you. And my prayer is that your heart would be a heart that is receptive to God's word. Uh, it's amazing when I think about this story and I, I just picture Jesus as this farmer. And in a way, he doesn't seem to really care about where he sows his seed. You know, when we plant, we're probably very careful to put it in nice, neat rows. But I get this picture of Jesus just with, you know, handfuls of seed and throwing some over, over by the band on the, on the parking lot and throwing some amongst the weeds and throwing some in the good soil uh, because he knows that this is what the word is. He sows the seed wherever. And I think it's a challenge for us, too, when we think about sharing the good news of, of Jesus. When we think about this... Uh, Maybe we should follow his example. Maybe sometimes we're a little bit too cautious about where we sow the seeds of the gospel. But farmer Jesus didn't seem to be too concerned. He sowed it everywhere. And when the conditions of people's hearts are right, then there will be growth. Uh, it's a really a good news story, isn't it? Because it's not of our own efforts. It's God that brings the growth. And this is another thing that the story reminds me of. That as we sow the seeds, it's not us that brings the growth, but it is God that brings the growth, and he will bring the growth. And so over these next three weeks, as we, a few, four weeks, as we look at planting and growing and uh, harvesting, and I forget what the other one is right now, uh, my prayer is that, like going back to Psalm, number, Psalm 1, that we will be like a tree planted by waters, that we will be strong, that we will be firm, that our roots will be deep in Jesus, so that when troubles come, as we sang and as we read in Psalm chapter 1, that when these things come, that we will not be moved, that we will not be shaken, that we will stand firm, and that we will be able to walk with God and witness the wonderful harvest that he wants to bring. May God bless you, and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that the scripture describes you as a sower and the sower of the seed. Lord, for those who are here this evening, we thank you that the seed has been planted in our hearts. And for those who are listening, Lord, I pray that uh, the soil of their heart would be receptive to your word. Uh, so it would not be, the seed wouldn't be sown in vain. Uh, but the seed would be planted in soil that is fertile and receptive to your word, we pray. God, we just thank you again for this opportunity that we have, ha have to gather like this. Uh, we do pray for the situations in our world that are on our heart, for the people that we are thinking about. Uh, Lord, tonight I do pray for, for Alan, and we also think of the family of Ruth Wright uh, and others who are experiencing loss. So we pray, Lord, that your spirit would be very close to them in these times, that they would experience your comfort and presence. Thank you for this time, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Give me a holy life, spotless and free.
cleanse thou refining flame all oh, that is mine self only may remain if thou refine fix thy intention sure make my desire God for speaking through us, to us through his word today. A closing song, all have need of God's salvation. We thank God for the special way in which he speaks to our heart, the special way in which he calls us. May God's spirit prompt our hearts so that we would be ready and willing to receive his word let it work in our hearts and transform us so that we can grow in deeper relationship with God, but not only that, to bring many to, into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord. I invite you to sing with me our closing song, and the band is going to lead us. All have need of God's salvation. The first verse says, all have need of God's salvation, if with him they'd live forever. But a promise he has given, it is written, whosoever. In the chorus, whosoever will come, will may come, and who comes to him shall never disappointed turn away. Praise the Lord, tis whosoever. We're going to sing all three verses through.
Lord will never turn away disappointed. And we thank God for that. Our benediction, Hebrews 13, verses 20 and 21. I invite you to turn in scripture with me. Hebrews 13, verse 20 and 21 says, May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you. So as we leave, we have our ushers. They're going to help us, direct us in the way we should drive away. May God go with you and have a blessed week. Thank you.